Yo, what's up? It's here. Our Gears of War. Gears of War 3. Three, three review. This many. Third Exci one. It's exciting. Um, let's just get this out of the way. Since you're going to be sitting here for 10 minutes listening to us talk about the game. Well, I'll just give you the score. 10 out of 10. <laughs> that was simple. Uh, if you want to know why, keep watching. So... Sorry, my door is open. Push it. There Boom. You go. Behind the scenes, on top of the episode. So, in Gears of War 3, we'll talk about campaign first. In Gears of War 3, you play again as Marcus Phoenix. And basically, the big story is uh, you gotta stop the Locust, you gotta stop the Lambent, and the only person that can help you is Adam Phoenix. I thought he was dead. Turns out he's not. No more spoilers after that. It's an amazing story. They kind of throw you that in the preview. Uh, Karen Travis did an amazing job with writing. Uh, the whole writing, uh, dialogue and stuff feels less campy than it did in previous games. But it's still the Gears humor. You know what I mean? Whether it be from, like, you know... Uh, there's a part where Baird's like, Hey, Cole, uh, uh, do you know where this grocery store is? I don't think we can find it. You know, you used to be a big Thrash Bowl star. How are you supposed to know where anything is? And Cole's like, well... You know, I'm sure one of them told me when I was getting my manicure, you know, it's just that type of fun shit. It's fun, fun stuff. Yeah. The difference between fighting the locust and fighting the lambent is vastly different. Um, namely just because... One explodes. Yeah, one explodes, <laughs> one doesn't. But, I mean, the gunkers are a pain in the ass. They're, they're ammo mm. sponges. Um, they're the mutated uh, boomers, by the way. If you're undercover and too close to them, they can whip out their hook arm and freaking hit you with it. Yep. Oh, as they throw these giant blobs of motion. Gunk, basically. That's why they're called gunkers. Um, you also have... Uh, drudges are basically like huge drones, but they mutate into stuff. And what I like is they have like, you know, sentinels, which are these huge tower versions of themselves. They have like vipers that have like a snake head. They have um, hydras that have like two arms. But then like they'll become Cerberus, where it's like they have the two arms and the snake head, you know? So it's like they, yeah. the mutations combine, and it makes for, like, every time you play a little different, which is pretty sweet. Story's probably ten hours long and normal, I would admit, I, I think. Around, yeah, I'd be in nine. Yeah. So, uh, and that gives or take how much collectibles you can find. But, I mean, the collectibles are hidden really well in the campaign. I mean, Al just showed me one last night where it's like, there's a box up on a cliff while you're fighting, and you need to shoot the box, and then it drops a collectible. It's like, how are you supposed to know that? Yeah. And he found it by accident by, like, shooting a boom shot, boom shot or something. Yeah. I mean, but then, obviously, there's kind of the obvious thing. It's like, oh, there's an alley over here. I better check, and then you'll find them. So it ranges from easier to extremely hard, I think, with those. And they have card cakes as well as the collectibles again. Right. There's 15 of those. And you want to get all these collectibles because they all give insight into characters from the book, ranging from, you know, Captain Michelson to, you know, Sam and Sam's father and that type of stuff. So it adds way more to the universe and the story. Um, awesome boss battles. There's a lot of boss battles in campaign, yeah. which is freaking sweet. So campaign is totally awesome. And then you can go back and play the campaign and arcade which can play, uh, you know, up to four-player co-op in the campaign or the arcade campaign where you compete for points. Big difference. If you're playing campaign, Al can play in casual, I can play in insane. Boom. But yeah, arcade's not set up like that. You're all playing on insane if you want to play on insane. Yeah. But I think they, they do it, I think, mainly because you can put the mutators, which is a new thing in this game, too. You slowly unlock those from doing different things and from beast mode to horde, and, like, unlocking different stuff. You slowly unlock mutators and stuff. And those are anywhere from, like, you know, you shoot guys head off and you hear chicken noise and they keep running around fighting for a bit. To Two, there's no ammo pickups. You don't get any ammo pickups. And, like, you know, some make it easier, like a super reload. You get an, uh, an active reload. And, like, your bullets do so much damage you kill them. You know, obviously those make it easier, so you get minus, like, your percentage. I think that's, like, 24% less points. And then, like, obviously, like, that ammo pickup, you get an ex additional 10% points and stuff like that. So you can mess with those, you know, during that. And that makes it fun and different every time. So that's all just the crap about the campaign. But then you can go out and play Horde Mode, okay? Horde Mode was in the last game, but they've upgraded it, okay? One cool thing is you can fight Locust and Lambent. And sometimes at the same time. And Locust and Lambent aren't friends, so they'll fight each other. Which is pretty freaking sweet. Uh, you have fortifications in this one, ranging from walls... 
sentries, decoys, um, turrets, and the silverback. Okay, silverback is crazy expensive, of course, but uh, sentries can you know be upgraded to have like you know double canisters that shoot electrical shot, and the decoys can go from a cardboard cutout of thrash ball coal to having mines strapped to them. An armored, yeah, torso and everything. And right, and the, tur and the turrets, too, can have, like, no shield on them, so you can take damage when you're shooting it, too. Fully upgraded, there's, like, a wall shield, and, like, you can't be touched. And what's cool about this is it upgrades all those things only based upon you repairing and upgrading them yourselves. So it's like, I was running around, and I have, like, really high sentry, but then, like, my brother Tyson's running around, and he has, like, you know really high turrets because he likes being on turrets all the time and whatnot. Yeah. So it's like, depends upon who you play as. It's like, I mean, most people are probably going to upgrade their, the walls first. Right. That's that up, the only yeah. thing you have unlocked. So a lot of people just keep doing that and max it out and obviously those always help. So those start from just Caltrops or just, you know, these spikes to razor wire and then you go through these different levels of all the different laser wires and stuff. Yep, and then they also have boss waves and those are ridiculous. You fight everything from corpsers, reavers, Lambent Berserker, um, two Berserkers. Yeah, Berserkers, the Brumac, Gunkers. I think that might be it. I think that might be it, but it's Pretty intense. Sure. It's crazy intense. Um, another added enemies are Formers, which I don't want to spoil what that is, but that's all we're gonna say. Yeah, obviously, if you don't want some of those things spoiled, go play the campaign first. Finish right. that before you go to Horde, because you'll fight enemies that you never. Have seen it until it yeah, and then the opposite of beast is or the opposite of horde is beast, and in beast you play as cla it's very class based. There's twelve waves, and you fight humans, and you're the locust, and you can be everything from wild tickers, which are really good at ripping apart um, the fortifications, and they can eat grenades. Eat grenades and become tickers, pretty much. You know, there's drones and ground gears, which are on foot. Cantuses, which you can heal. You know, um, maulers, which are the big boomers, butchers with the knives. That type of stuff. Mm -hmm. And then the final tier, you can be the Berserker. Um, you can be the Armored Cantus, which is pretty much indestructible unless they hit it with bombs. And I just rip through enemies with that thing. Yeah, and you can be the Roll Attack. And the Digger. And you're like, why is the Digger last tier? Because you can stand behind cover and just kill and get multi-kills and just stand behind cover. Yeah. It, I think that one's, obviously, the Digger is a little more... You have to master him, I think. Yeah, it's a little harder to get used to playing him, though. We I can't tell, also we can't tell in Beast Mode if this is um, a mistake or not, but we're kind of confused because Beast Mode, they set up all these fortifications, and then in a lot of levels, they sprint out at you. So it's yeah. like, what's the point of the fortifications? Yeah, so the, the AI, you know... I feel like there might be need to be a patch for that or something. Right, they set up like they're playing Horde and you're the Beast against them, but they just sprint out of their stuff most times. Sometimes, sometimes that makes it really easy... Where, like, three or four guys are actually, you can just kill them real quick. But sometimes you spawn and there's guys already there and you get killed really quick. So you can, you can blow, you know, a thousand bucks on a boomer because you get killed right away sometimes. So Right. We don't really know if that was intentional. It's very... It, Beast, uh, a lot of people play it at first and they're like, this is stupid. It's all about money management. It's all about roles. And playing by yourself is really, really tough because there's a timer. You're trying to beat the timer. Yeah. Time runs out, you're screwed. So if you don't have a friend to play with, it's kind of a mode that you, it's, it's, it's co-op mode. Beast and Horde yeah. co-op mode. And when I didn't have anyone online I wanted to play that, I actually, I personally had a really hard time getting into matches with that. I don't know if it's because there's just so many people trying to play it. No, there's not a lot of people playing or, Beast. There's tons I, of people playing Horde. Yeah, I'm assuming most people that are playing Beast are playing with their buddies in a private match. And they're right, not going and online. seriously guys, go out and play Beast. It is freaking awesome. Give it a, give it a shot, give yeah. it a chance. I really like it, and I didn't at first. But it's because you got to learn the classes. Yeah. Now, on online multiplayer, you can play online multiplayer or you can play against bots. And you have Team Deathmatch, Warzone, Execution, Capture the Leader, King of the Hill, and Wingman. All right? Wingman, pretty much nothing has changed. Well, Wingman, actually, instead of five teams, there's four now. Right. There's only four teams. But, like, nothing's really changed other than, other, that, other than that. It's yeah, pretty it's much the same. same game mode. Spotting helps big time in that. Yeah. Um, capture the Leader is... Basically, Guardian and, and, submission. and Submission combined. It's really, really fun, but it's very tactical. Because the leaders can basically spot anything they want. So that, that big time helps. Yeah, as the leader, obviously, with your TACCOM, you can see everything. Yeah, so you nice. can spot enemies as they're coming, which, if you do that, your team, and if your team stays with you, it's it can provide some pretty interesting matches. Yeah. Um, King of the Hill, I'm pretty... I think the only reason they called it King of the Hill is because people know what King of the Hill means, but it's way more 
like Annex. Pretty much Annex with the King of the Hill title. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty much Annex with the King of the Hill title, and the rings move around, so you can't camp anymore. And basically, the rings appear, and the score the timer starts, starts going, going down. That's probably one of the best improvements. Yeah, and so if nobody's movie. capturing it, then too bad. Uh, Warzone, same thing it's always been. Execution's the same thing it's always been. And Team Deathmatch is Team Deathmatch. The only difference between other games is there's spawns. So, yeah, you have a set. Al's team has 10, I have 10. Every time I kill somebody, it takes away from their spawning pool. Until 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, they're screwed. And then obviously you got five guys left. And, you know, that that can be really interesting and fun if you're actually down. Like, I've won some matches where they still have, you know, five or six spawns, and you tear through them really quick. It can swing really fast in right. that. Right. So those are the game modes, okay, about, you know, all the stuff you can do. But the real replayability comes in is the medals and unlocking the titles, okay? So you have stuff that's pretty easy, in my opinion, to, like, Onyx Metal, like, beat the campaign on Insane. Like I said, Al can play in casual, I can just follow him, you know, yeah, and, and, and get it. That's easy, through. okay? But then you have, like, um... Um, you know, beat waves 1 through 50 on Insane on Horde. I've done that, but it was hard, okay? And we used mutators to do it. I don't think it's... It, it, it's incredible. If you can do it without mutators, hats off to you. Yeah, great it's, job. It's, it's, it's amazing. It's tough, yeah. You know, um, but with the guns, to Onyx a gun, to Onyx the Retro Lancer, for instance, okay? Boom, you gotta get 100, 100 kills with this to get the bronze, right? Then you gotta get 500 to get the silver, Okay, then you gotta get the gold. It's 6,000 kills to get the Onyx and to unlock the Onyx skin, okay? Right? And then there's other things, like just unlocking characters, a lot of them are level-based. But to unlock, like, the Savage Theron Guard, you need to beat waves 1 through 12 on all difficulties of Horde without failing. Without and failing. that's the trick, without failing. Yeah. That's tough. But the hardest character so far i found to unlock is Chairman Prescott. You need the Silver All-Fathers Medal. Okay, the Bronze All-Fathers Medal is playing 100 matches of every game mode. Okay? So then you need to go in and play 300 matches of every game mode. Okay? That's 1,600 matches of every game mode to unlock Chairman Prescott. It's, it's nuts. Yeah. You know? But, I mean, it's obvious. Uh, Rom's not in the game. Kim's not in the game. Bernadette Mataki's not a, play not a playable character. Tight. Ty Kaliso's yeah. not, you know, there's a lot of missing Locust. It's like, there's going to be DLC, so get the season pass. 10 out of 10 for Gears of War. Watch the behind the scenes. We'll show you up close and personal this Marcus statue, the Adam Phoenix um, award, and we'll show you our retro lancers, you know, up close and personal. So check that out. Congratulations to Fallen Saint and Die Guy. You guys won the Gears of War contest and won you guys in Infected Omen skins. Mm -hmm. um, Deus Ex Machimi Chimi, Batman's coming up, There's a bunch of good stuff. Skygram, it's all going to be awesome. Yeah. So. Assassin's Creed, Bioshock, oh, oh. Modern Warfare. I mean, all this stuff underneath, subscribe to that. Sorts of stuff. Thanks for watching. Hopefully you watch this whole thing. Who knows how long it would be, but and thanks to YouTube for not having the 10 minutes. Um, this will come up. Anya! Chase! Respond! Over! Come on, damn it! Answer me! Marcus! I'm with Jace near the ship. I need some help with Prescott or he's not gonna make it. I heard of Prescott. Tell me that's just my old head engine. Prescott? What, do we got an echo here or something? Yeah, Prescott's back, Michelson's dead, and my father's alive. Film with 11. Anya, we're coming to get you. There's a lot more wounded coming ashore too, Marcus. We need someone to help out at the lifeboats. 